You ever wonder which agents are the hardest to play? Whether it's because you're new to the game, filling on a role you don't normally play, or just trying to find a new main. Knowing what you're getting yourself into before selecting an agent is always a good idea. So in this video, we're going to be ranking every single agent in Valorant based on how hard they are to play. Before we get into it though, remember if your match history looks like this guy, then head on over to skillcap.com and we can help you fix that. Stick around at the end of the video to hear more. Starting out this list, we have an agent that many players absolutely despise, Reyna. Whenever we do our agent tier list, we get so many comments about Reyna being a C tier agent. Reyna is not a strong agent, and now I'm about to tell you why. First, what I want you to do is forget about Reyna's blind. This ability can be strong in specific situations, but many times it'll just get shot out of the sky. Let's talk about Reyna's heal and dismiss. Both of these abilities don't actually help Reyna take her first gunfight. What they actually do is they help Reyna stay alive to take her second gunfight. One thing that is important to remember is that because Reyna does have her dismiss, she can take duels in ways that other agents may not be able to. But the contrast you're going to see from Reyna versus an agent like Chamber on this list is that Reyna needs to first earn the kill and then she earns her free life. Agents like Jet or Chamber don't need to earn the kill. Not to mention agents like Chamber and Jet have tools that will help them earn that first kill. Reyna is an agent you will get no assistance on. It leaves everything up to you and your mechanics. You might as well be playing an agent with no utility and that's why we place her as the hardest agent on this list. To genuinely get value on Reyna, it takes a very skilled player, and that's why we place her as our most difficult agent. Next, we have Yoru. His kit takes a ton of practice to get the hang of. If you want to play him, you'll need to have a great understanding of the game, good mechanics, and excellent on-the-fly decision making. Of all the duelists in the game, his kit provides the most preparation, making his skill floor very high. One of the often overlooked parts of Yoru is that although when placed in the right hands he can be super strong, he often needs a bit more communication to work, since your teammates aren't as familiar with what works and what doesn't work on Yoru. This makes it very difficult to get value on Yoru sometimes, and for that we rate him as the hardest agent to play. Coming in a close second, we have Astra, who became a lot more difficult to play once she lost her fifth star. The old Astra was arguably very easy to play since you could place down her stars early, especially on defense. But with one less star and a much longer cooldown when recalling them, a bad Astra player is now punished far more than they were before. She requires a ton of map awareness, and her astral form can feel a bit hard to use if you've never played her before. Think of it this way. Every second you spend in astral form is a second you're not spending actually playing the game. It's already pretty hard to time your abilities sometimes when you're close enough to hear the enemies near you, but Astra needs to be able to time her abilities well even when she doesn't get those sound cues. Because of that, Astra earns herself a high spot on this list. Next up, we're going to be talking about another duelist, Neon. This one is a little bit debatable, I will admit. Ever since the quality of life changes she got a few patches ago, her movement has become a lot more forgiving. But even though that's the case, playing Neon well is still very difficult. She's so fast that a bad Neon player will oftentimes have terrible spacing with her team, and to be entirely honest, she's only really powerful when coupled with a strong initiator player who can assist you on your entries. Otherwise, she might as well be rushing into sites solo, and while she may get a kill doing that, if nobody is there to back her up, she's just going to get traded out. This is why we believe that she's still one of the hardest agents in the game to pick up. Moving on, it's now time to talk about the first sentinel on the list, Cypher. When it comes to game sense, Cypher is the most demanding agent in the game. There really isn't anything mechanically difficult about his kit, but if you don't know what you're doing with him, you're not going to see much value out of the pick. Cypher is an agent that is all about information. That means getting info and knowing how to play off it. Similar to an agent like Yoru, Cypher's kit also doesn't really provide any inherent value. Yes, his trips can provide information for your team, but if you don't play off them correctly, or if you don't change up where you're placing them, enemies will just destroy them and they don't get that much value. His cage is nice, but you need to know when to pop them to get the most amount of value. Finally, his ultimate is also not the greatest, but can be round winning if used to its maximum potential. A lot of the time, if you aren't well practiced with Cypher, you're much better off playing an easier Sentinel. At this point, we're almost moving into another tier when it comes to difficulty, as this next handful of agents aren't quite as difficult as the last few, but I would definitely still put them on the harder side. To start this off, we're going to be talking about Sova. Pretty much all of Sova's kit has a low skill floor, but a very high skill ceiling. Even abilities as simple as his drone can still be difficult to land a tag with sometimes. Not to mention, sometimes his utility can mislead his teammates if you're not careful. Yes, you can just shoot a recon dart and it will probably get some value scanning a corner for you, but there are plenty, and I mean plenty of bad darts. 
darts. If you shoot a poor dart that gets blocked by some geometry, you can potentially give your team false information and that false sense of security can get them killed. His ultimate can be used for post plant, but it can get tricky sometimes to confirm a kill on them, especially after he got the drone changes where it only pings twice. And I'm not even going to mention the shock dart geometry. Yes, Sova is a very difficult agent to master, but he ranks a bit lower because he still has some easy to use tools in his kit. Speaking of easy to use tools, the next agent on this list is Breach. Breach's kit is not too difficult to understand. His flashes, fault line, and ultimate are pretty self explanatory if I'm being honest. The hard part about playing Breach is knowing how to combo your utility with your teammates to get the most value out of him. Breach's kit is very powerful, but it's at its strongest when you're setting up someone else to make a play. Take a stun for example. A lot of the time to be able to get the best angle to stun an area, you need to be standing somewhere that you can't capitalize on it yourself. Think of a map like Split where you can run ramps from Sewer or Be Heaven from Market. This team coordination is probably the hardest part of playing Breach and that's why we put him so high up on this list. Speaking of team coordination, the next up is Sky. Similar to Breach, Sky's utility also takes team coordination to maximize her potential. Most of Sky's kit is pretty easy. Her heal, dog, and her ultimate aren't very difficult. Most of Sky's skill comes in her flashes, which definitely take practice to get comfortable with. Getting the mechanics down to pop flash is very important if you want to be a good Sky. As Sky, you also need to be able to maneuver them to flash for teammates as well. Pro teams do this all the time, where they pop flash for a teammate out of a smoke they're hiding in from super far away way to help them get a kill. After practicing the mechanics, they're not impossible, but picking Sky in a ranked game when you haven't played her before can be rough. Moving on, next up on the chopping block is Viper. Viper is interesting because there are some aspects to her kit that aren't really shared by other agents. For example, besides Neon, she's the only agent in the game that has a resource meter that needs to be managed. This is also arguably the most challenging part of playing Viper. On top of that, she has a relatively long cooldown on her orb and wall, so if you put them up at the wrong time, it becomes really easy for the enemy team to punish you once they go down. Her utility is also a lot more permanent than the other controllers, so if you put down your wall somewhere, you're not able to change its location later into a round. This means it's extremely important to think about how your wall will be used from round to round, especially since throwing it down early could be a tell for the enemy team to let them know they should rotate early. Overall, Viper isn't the hardest agent in the game, but she definitely requires more practice than one would think. With Viper out of the way, it's time we talk about Jet. Since Jet's rework where she now needs to become empowered before she's able to dash, she definitely has become a bit harder to play. You could even argue that the new Jet is even harder to play than some of the other agents we've already talked about. I, however, am not yet convinced. At the end of the day, Jet's dash is still an extremely powerful tool, and most of the time you know when you're going to get into a fight. Having on-demand smokes that are also some of the easiest to use in the game, and that can become one ways wherever she wants is also an insane tool to have. Jet is still closer to the harder side to pick up, especially for newer players, but with such a powerful kit, even a bad jet can seem to find good value while playing her. Now let's move on to the next class of agents. This next group is definitely easier to play than the ones we've mentioned before this point. The agents in this next group all have elements in their kit that can provide value even when used incorrectly. And to start this group off, we have Omen. Yes, it can be challenging to know when and how to use his TPs and his ultimate, but with Omen, the rest of his kit is so strong that it doesn't really matter. If you just know where to smoke, Omen's dark cover is the best intuitive smoke to use. His paranoia is also insane, covering an enormous area and blinding anyone one that gets hit by it. It doesn't really take a genius to throw out a good omen blind and that ability alone can net you a ton of kills. So again, omen is an agent with some more difficult elements to his kit, but the parts that are easy to use can get a ton of value. The second agent we're putting in this section is Fade. As Valorant's newest agent, Fade definitely has some very cool utility to work with, but I wouldn't really call any of it difficult to use. The hardest ability for Fade to use is her Seize, since it needs to be timed and placed really well to trap enemies. But her Eye and her Prowler are not very difficult to use at at all. Similar to a Sova Recon Dart, a lot of the time you can just throw it out to clear an area for you and that's usually good enough. And if you happen to tag anyone, her Prowler becomes even easier to use. Not to mention her Ultimate which has a larger area than a Breach Ult. Fade's kit definitely has a high skill ceiling when mastered, but picking her up isn't much trouble. Next up on this list is yet another initiator, Ko. Similar to an agent like Sky, probably the hardest part of Ko's kit is learning how to use his Flash, but that itself is not nearly as difficult as it is with Sky. Yes, you have more control of a Sky Flash, but that's precisely why it can be so difficult. Also, the rest of KO's kit is very straightforward. He has a molly, his zero point has a giant radius, grabs info and disables enemy util, and his ultimate is a very powerful retake tool. You can honestly just run onto site and dump all of your util out randomly, and you'll probably find at least some value doing that. Because of that, we've stuck KO here 
easier for now. Keep in mind, we're aware KO can have a very high skill ceiling. Learning to time your knife or how to flash your team in perfectly can be a challenge, but if you're just looking to get any value, it's not too hard. Moving down the list, it's time we talk about Raze. Raze is hardly an agent many people would describe as difficult, but I wouldn't call her easy. She has a ton of easy to use tools with her paint shells, her boom bot, and her ultimate, which is why we're talking about her so late into this list. But Raze's satchels add an element of difficulty to keep her from falling any lower on this list. Now, double satcheling isn't the hardest thing to do in Valorant, but it definitely does take some practice to get the timing down. The satchels in general aren't something that I would expect a newer player to understand the uses of right away, and that alone is enough to give raise this spot on this list. Before we round off this section, we still have to talk about one more agent, Phoenix. Similar to Raze, Phoenix has a ton of easy to use tools in his kit. Although getting the most out of him can be difficult when it comes to his molly and firewall, the fact that they also heal him give them other uses that lower level players can take advantage of. His ultimate is also very straightforward and he has one of the easier to use flashes in the game. Putting all this together, Phoenix seems like a great fit this far down the list. There are only a few agents left to talk about, but this list isn't over yet. These last few agents all come with very simple, easy to use kits that are very straightforward for the average player to get a grasp of. And starting off this section, we have Brimstone, arguably the easiest controller to pick up. Brim comes with easy to drop smokes, a molly, and an ultimate that is great for post plants or just clearing out areas in general. Probably the most difficult part about Brim is learning how smokes work in general, which is why he isn't the lowest agent on this list. But it's hard to deny that Brimstone himself is not that difficult of an agent to pilot it, and after learning the basics of how smoking works, there isn't much to playing Brimstone. The next few agents on this list are actually all Sentinels. It's very weird that they're all down here, but when you really think about it, Sentinels have a ton of tools that make them simple to pick up when you're just starting out. The first of these Sentinels we're going to talk about is Sage. The thing with Sage is that it's very easy to learn how to wall off a choke point and heal a teammate when they take damage, but you can take that to another level when you think about how learning to bait a teammate's body with your res, learning how to make aggressive plays with your wall, and even the timing on when to throw your slows. Of course, these aren't all necessary to know how to do when playing Sage, and it can be fairly easy to transfer over some of these skills from other agents you play as well, which is why we consider Sage to be an easy to play agent. But because of those skills that you can put time into mastering, I would definitely consider Sage to be a bit more difficult than the last few agents. We've now reached the last three agents on this list, and when it comes to easy to play agents, Chamber is one that comes to mind. He has a very powerful trip that has unlimited range and can do a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to defending sites. The slow effect is massive and makes hitting your shots on Chamber very easy. Most players aren't going to understand why Chamber is on this list, but Chamber is an agent that can hard carry. The reason Chamber can hard carry so easily though is because he's incredibly forgiving. Every 20 seconds he has a free life and he basically never has to save. Of course, a good Chamber needs to be mechanically gifted in the game, but even if you get zero value out of his headhunter, you're still able to have a free operator every few rounds, which easily makes Chamber one of the most forgiving agents in the game. There's a reason he has one of the highest pick rates in the game right now. His kit is incredibly powerful and not that difficult to use. Now moving on to the second easiest agent to play in the game, we have our final sentinel, Killjoy. KJ's utility does a lot of the heavy lifting for her when defending sight and can basically grab her free kills in most rounds. She also doesn't really need to worry about timing her abilities properly since she can just pop her mollies when her alarm bot or turret go off. When first starting out, the only things you need to worry about as Killjoy are how you set up your utility and where you're positioned, but you can find KJ setups all over the place and a lot of them are pretty straightforward. On offense, it can get a bit tricky knowing how to default properly with her, but this is heavily mitigated by the fact that her ultimate is able to clear entire sites for you when executing. With this in mind, it was a very easy choice ranking KJ as the second easiest agent in the game. And that's all for this video. Let us know what you guys thought of it in the comments. Are there any agents you think should have been ranked higher or lower? Also, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, don't forget to leave a like as it really does help out the channel and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Remember though, if you're really looking to improve at Valorant, then you've got to check out skillcap.com. Over on the site, we have hundreds of hours of exclusive content designed to take your game to the next level. It's also all backed by our rank improvement guarantee, meaning if you don't improve while actively using our service, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. We do this because our service works, and if it doesn't work, you shouldn't pay. So, what are you waiting for? Get started on your climb at skillcap.com, link in the description below. We here at Skillcap want to give you a huge thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.